In these containers here, I'm growing tomatoes, as you can see, not looking the healthiest right now, but it is the middle of October and we've had a really wet summer, so it's not really surprising, but they're not looking uh, great. But what's interesting about this is that the potting mix I'm growing in them in, in these two containers here is five years old. And the exciting thing for me about this sort of experiment I've been doing is that the tomatoes have been growing as well in this five-year-old potting mix as they have done at any year uh, before that, even the first year in the brand new potting mix. So what I've been doing each year is because the tomatoes will use up most of the nutrients in the potting mix each year, um, I've been replenishing uh, the nutrients uh, in different in different ways while leaving the actual potting mix in in the container and uh, last year I actually tried using a uh, completely homemade fertilizer so I added some worm compost or vermicast and then I also fed the uh, plants with uh, homemade uh, liquid comfrey and the tomatoes did okay uh, last year but they didn't do brilliantly so this year I went back to uh, also using, still using vermicast, but adding into the, adding with the vermicast a handful of dried seaweed and also a handful of a all-purpose fertilizer with some added trace elements uh, to it. And that really gave a lot better results. And I think the reason why it helps to add a little bit of uh, sort of all-purpose fertilizer is that while our worm compost and vermicast will contain like all of the major nu nutrients that plants need and also a lot of the trace elements we can never be sure that it will actually contain the full spectrum um, and in the right balance and sometimes if plants are just missing one important trace element uh, that can actually affect quite significantly how well they grow. So I think the combination of the, of the worm compost plus a little bit of, uh, of fertilizer seems, seems to really help. And I still feel like, because I did, basically I did a whole layer of vermicast on top. And so that will have actually provided the bulk of the nutrients. And that's all from our, you know, all made from our kitchen waste. I'm really pleased with this experiment because it shows that it is possible not only to reuse uh, a potting mix every year but actually to still get really good results uh, with it as well. I actually used two different uh, sorts of potting mix in these two containers. So, so this one here is coir which is uh, coconut fibre and uh, this one actually the two things when you're reusing a, uh, a potting mix the two things which are important are the nutrients which I've just talked about you need to replenish those but the other thing which is important is the structure and the structure is basically having air gaps within the uh, potting mix so that the roots can breathe because the roots need to breathe they need oxygen to breathe and if all the air gaps disappear then the roots can't breathe very well and tomatoes in particular like to have plenty of air um, in the soil so one way to test the structure is to grab a handful like this and squeeze it and after squeezing it, it should hopefully be nice and crumbly uh, afterwards. As you'll notice, this choir is, does actually form quite a sort of compact ball, which I thought at the beginning of the season might not be um, ideal, but surprisingly the plants have grown quite well in it. Uh, and I think one reason for that might be is that this year uh, I've been practicing no dig uh, container gardening which you know the jury's still out whether you know how well obviously we know don't know they can work very well in the ground and how appropriate it is for containers I think you know we're still sort of learning um, about that but I think one potential benefit of no dig when you're reusing the potting mix particularly if the structure is beginning to deteriorate is that um, you're not you're not disturbing this potting mix under here and when you get like roots and things like that going through those are all going to create air gaps and the roots are going to rot down and that's going to leave the air gaps whereas if if I took all this out and put it back in again um, I'd lose all those sort of roots and all those root holes and potentially the structure could sort of compact again 
I'm not sure about that, but that's sort of just my sort of theory. Because what I've been doing is, um, at the end of the season, I've just been, and I will do quite soon with these, because these are pretty much, as you can see, near the end of the life. I'm chopping the tomatoes off at the base here, and then leaving all of that to, to rot down, and then putting the fertiliser in a layer of worm compost on top, and planting the new tomatoes uh, into that. This container next door is actually, uh, the potting mix in here is based on composted uh, wood chip and composted bark. And actually that has retained the structure quite a lot better. Yeah, it still goes into quite a tight ball, but when I sort of touch it, as you can see, it sort of crumbles again much more easily. So that's pretty good really for five years five years old and of course when you're reusing a potting mix you, you could add something in to help you know break open it up a bit um, but you know I've all I've been doing is adding worm compost uh, or vermicast onto the top and that seems to have kept the structure of this um, pretty good so it's an ongoing experiment but I mean what I'm really pleased about is it does really highlight that it is I mean, we sort of knew it already, but it just shows it. But it is possible to reuse potting mix um, for, for more than a year or two. You know, this is five years. And not only can you reuse it, but yeah, the results are as good. Uh, well, this year they've been as good as, uh, and actually even better than the new potting mix that I tried. Good. And I mean, this obviously, this is, uh, as I said, this is composted bark and this is coir. And, you know, I haven't tried any other you know exposed experiment on other sort of bases so it would be interesting to to do that and if anyone has tried uh reusing it on like you know like green waste compost or something like that for for, for several years uh, it'd be really interesting to to hear from you the other quite interesting thing about this is that conventional wisdom is that you shouldn't grow the same type of plant uh, in the same uh, pot or the same piece of soil each year and just because this is where I grow tomatoes, this is the sunny spot. I have been growing tomatoes uh, for five years in a row in, in these containers. And there hasn't been, well, they have got blight now, but that's because of the wet summer. And actually the ones in the new potting mix uh, got the blight first. Uh, so it wasn't anything to do with the, the old uh, potting mix. So um, apart from uh, a blight, they have actually there hasn't been any problem with disease from growing them in the same potting mix uh, year after year, which is good to know. Um, of course, that might change next year. <laughs> they might uh, all be suddenly, you know, get some terrible disease. But uh, so far, fingers crossed, uh, so good. And I will we'll keep this um, experiment going.